Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lines TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys a match review in our 1 1 draw against Brighton in the first game of this year's preseason. I'm going to be speaking about the debuts of Hakim Ziyech, Timo Werner. I'm going to be speaking about the pressing structures we saw today. I'm going to be speaking about the lineups, the formations. I'm going to be speaking about a ton of things today. There were so many big talking points, big observations, and of course, you guys, you know, I'm going to break them down. But before I get into anything though, let me get the plugs out of the way first. Only one plug, and that is, if you like today's video, if you're happy to see the debuts of Hakim Ziyech and Timo Werner, if you're happy that Werner scored on his debut, and if you're happy to see the pass that Ziyech played, then smash hell out of that like button, you guys. I want to go for 5,000 likes in today's video for the first match review of this preseason. So without wasting no more time, we get straight into the match review. And the first big talking point is the lineup that Frank Lampard produced in the first half. Now, I think at times it was like a 4-2-3-1, which then became a 4-3-3. We saw Ruben as a more advanced midfield player. We saw Kante and Cover alongside him. We saw Timo Werner, Hudson Odoi, and Hakim Ziyech too. And in defense, Clark Soto and Christensen, who I thought, you know, they moved the ball very tidily. I thought Clark Soto looked very accomplished himself. And, you know, they were matched up alongside Reese James Alonso and Kepa and Gold as well. So this was definitely a team that maybe I think it strongly suggests that we could see a similar lineup in the first game of the new Premier League season against Brighton. That would not surprise me. Maybe there may be like a few tweaks made in that team, but maybe at this point in time, that is the fittest, most well-prepared team that Lampard has. I think now moves us on very nicely to the debuts of Timo Werner and Hakim Ziyech. Starting with Werner, and his roll up front was very, very interesting. It did seem like Werner was playing as a false nine, and then it got me thinking, why would Lampard do that? You know, I think when you look at the profile of player that Werner is, you know, in particular with how he really developed on the Nagelsmann last season, he became more adept at playing between the lines and dropping deeper as well. So on that basis, when you consider that if we use Werner up front, if Lampard had to use Werner up front as the lone striker, then I guess we couldn't play the same way. You know, we'd have to find a different way to accommodate Werner's strengths. That's what Lampard really encourages. That's what Lampard is fully about. So I guess this game is a good opportunity to test out how Werner could do playing as a false nine. I thought it was very interesting to see. We don't normally tend to see tactics like this as much. Um, Werner was finding very intelligent positions between the lines. You know, he was dropping very deep at times even receiving from the midfield players and he was drifting around the left hand side the right hand side and I thought it was like kind of crazy how fluid our attack was you know they were constantly finding different positions at times you even see Hudson Odoi and Werner in the same areas of the field too I saw Werner on the right hand side left hand side deep as well and further up top pure freedom pure license to run where he wants and I thought his performance was pretty good um Vern, of course he's good going 1v1 but you know he mainly needs his speed to get past his man so you guys you know prepare yourself for that he's not like a grower on the ball in that sense but uh you know I thought his intelligent movement was good is it a surprise that for the first goal he was in that area to receive that kind of messed up header from Hudson Odoi um the way that move was set up the way that move was set up by the wizard the maestro and none other than Hakim Ziyech now I told you guys straight, I told you guys from the start, Ziyech is the player that I'm looking at the most. You know, Ziyech, he's 27 years old, he's in his prime, he's worked on his game, he's mastered his game, he is ready for the next level, he is ready to make the step up and become that main creative influence for a big club like us. And wow, I mean, just the first pass in the first like four minutes, I mean, what an unbelievable ball. That is the type of distribution that this team has sorely lacked. The wonders we have now of having a player with a left foot that can play balls in like that. And you know what, this might sound a bit controversial, but for me, I've always felt like Ziyech, he'll be spoken about a lot this season. I think he might get some comparisons maybe alongside like your De Bruyne's and your Bruno's and you know, players of that nature. But you know what, I think obviously De Bruyne is like the best, one of the best players in the league. I do think though that when I'm comparing like uh, Ziyech to Bruno, Bruno relies more on his volume. You know, when you see the difference between how Ziyech passes the ball, plays a through ball over the top, look at the backspin on the ball, look at that perfect way, look at how the ball just floats and then kind of like dips and drops. That is pure technique, that is pure mastery of the ball. You're not seeing that type of take us from Bruno, you know what I mean? So if this is what we're 
going to be witnessing throughout the entire season. You guys, I am fully here for it. I am fully here for it. I think he's going to have an unbelievable year for us. And there's some of the balls he played today with his left foot, outside the foot, curling efforts, long balls, everything you want to see. Let's pray the injury is not too deep. I'm hoping this is like a precautionary uh, taking off. It had to be. The last thing we need is any of last season's misfortunes. Like the way we just were so unfortunate with injuries. It's, I know this year in 2020 has been a bit of a madness, but please, like, when's it going to end? Like, please, the last thing I want to see is Ziyech not being fit for the start of the season. But there you guys, here are my thoughts and opinions on Ziyech and Werner. I think this is a good idea of what to expect from them, man. I'm really excited to see how they develop, how they play together, and the understanding that they create playing in the team together. I thought the uh, pressing today was very good. I noticed some different patterns with how we were closing out the opposition in particular with how maybe one of the defenders would like leave their defensive line push further forward and stop and intercept a pass uh, in the half so maybe this is like the influence already of our new coach Barry he was signed mainly to help with the pressing coordinations and making us a more cohesive and better pressing team and maybe this was evidence of what to expect uh, throughout the season I felt like we looked a lot more comfortable off the ball that was one of the main things that really stood out for me. Now, yes, I know it's a friendly game against Brighton, but considering that the season starts in literally like nearly two weeks, yeah, the players' preparation and fitness now must be, you know, a bit close to getting there. I felt this game was quite feisty as well. The word tackles, you know, players were going for balls. And I thought this is like the perfect preparation for the new season to come. When I was watching that first half, all I kept thinking about was, I can imagine Kai Havertz playing in this team. I can imagine maybe for the first goal, Havertz being in that area in place of hudson Adoy, playing a path of Kedo across goal to Werner, who then taps in the back of the net. I could see the movements. I could see the spaces being created on top of that. I could see how Havertz's ability in the air could be useful for a team like us, especially from crossing situations. I feel like he's going to really add to this team even more. I'd guess he would play in place with Ruben in the team. Yeah, I'm assuming that. I think that when Havertz comes, this team goes up to another level and I can't wait for this signing to be announced, which is sounding like it's going to be on Monday, you guys. So let's be prepared for that. Let's get excited and let's see what happens. We now move on to the second half and actually Lampard was going to make a ton of changes in the team. You know, we had to take off Ziyech in the second half. Let's hope he's going to come back okay. And we saw a ton of Academy grads get opportunities. In particular, Ethan was playing and you know, we remain to use uh, a 4 2 3 1 with Ethan playing alongside Lewis Baker. We saw Conor Gallagher playing higher up as the uh, attacking man in the team, too. We saw young Academy grads and Harvey Vell playing down the right hand side. Harvey Vell, very good player, incredible left foot. Um, I'm going to speak about him soon. And of course, on the left hand side, we saw Luke McCormick. And, you know, on top of that, guys like your Matsons, etc., etc. I thought that they looked pretty decent too. I thought in particular, players like Connor stood out. His pressing the final third created so many opportunities for us. He looked ready, he looked hungry. He was getting tight and closing down his man, winning those balls back and starting moves. And near the end too, he played a nice cute reverse ball to Giroud, who nearly made it 2-1 right at the end. So for me, you know, Connor Gallagher, He's ready to play in the Premier League. I'm hoping he gets a good long move because he definitely is a player that has a lot of potential and a lot of promise. And that was exciting to see. Uh, moving on to Harvey Vell, young 16 year old, a rocket of a left foot. Um, you know, you guys need to search his goal there. He scored from like the halfway line. You know, unreal player, very good technique too. I liked how confident he looked when he came on. You know, his like first effort in the game was a first timer in the bottom left corner. And that's the type of confidence that he plays with and that's the confidence he has in his own game so it's great to see Lampard giving opportunities to some of the younger players in this scene but unfortunately you guys especially after having so many positive things to mention and speak about we didn't win the game we conceded two penalties in this game and, and that's because if you're bringing on an entirely different team a different defense of course naturally there is going to be some confusion in those moments but still though two penalties you know for the first one Caballero made and absolutely ridiculous save in the bottom right corner but i guess that is youthful and experience you know ampadu should have done much better in that area a bit too uh, hasty to win the ball back he didn't have to do that he had to keep his body there and just stay with his man instead a penalty is conceded and even though caballero dived the right way he wasn't able to prevent that goal going in the back of the net i guess you could say that overall in the game that was a fair result 
I didn't feel like we consistently pressured the you know, Brighton goal. We created some you know interesting moments, some dangerous moments, but it kind of felt like a team that maybe you know isn't fully there just yet, isn't fully fit. And on that note, you guys, I'm gonna wrap things up and keep things moving. Of course, the result was disappointing, but we saw many positive things. In particular, in particular, our new fluid style of attacking football. We saw so many players rotating positions. We saw so many players in their own areas together. Is this the sign of things to come? Is this what Lampard had planned from the start? I guess we'll find out soon, you guys. On that note, I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.